All right, here we go. This chapter, we're going to deal with exponential logistic and logarithmic functions. I actually think logarithmic functions are somewhat easy. But, you know, that could be me. Okay? So today, we're looking at exponential functions and their bat and their graphs, the natural base E, and logistic functions and their graphs. Oh boy, now I did it. Let's go back. Okay. I don't know why I saved those, but that's from last year. All right. So exponential functions. Let A and B be real number constants. An exponential function is a number times another number to a variable power, such as negative 2 times 1.5 to the x power. A, B to the x power. Okay? So... That's an exponential function. Last chapter, we had power functions. 6x to the negative fourth or something like that. Okay? So, b is the base of the function. a is an initial value of the function. It's what we start with. Why is it an initial value? Well, at time equals 0, x would be 0, right? What's any number to the 0 power? One, Taylor. And one times any number is that number. So that's why A is called the initial value. Okay? That's a starting number. All right. So we want to determine a formula for, for an exponential function here that to the second degree is four ninths to the or to the negative second degree is four ninths to the negative first degree is four thirds and then to zero degree is four and then it goes to 12 and then it goes to 36. While doing this we're multiplying by three each time right okay so what is our initial value going to be on this first one on g of x <coughs> Well, you look at the zero, and it's going to be four. Okay? We're multiplying by three each time. So it's times three to the x power. Now, let's see if this works out. If you take on your calculator four times three to the negative two power, four times three to the negative two power, you're going to get 0.4 repeating, correct? And then if you push math, enter, what does that tell you? It gives you four ninths, okay? Four times three to the negative one is basically four thirds and so on, okay? H of X, what's our initial value for H of X gonna be? Eight, because that's where zero lines up with. And what are we multiplying by each time? One fourth, we're taking that to the x power. Okay? So one fourth of the negative second power is actually a positive 16. 16 times 8 is 128. Okay? Okay? Um, and that just explains what I just explained. So we're not going to worry about that slide. Exponential growth and decay. Okay? If something has a positive number as A and the base is bigger than 1, this is an exponential growth function, like a population growth, like the population growth of a town. If a town keeps getting bigger, then the B would have to be bigger than 1 and A would have to be a positive number. If it's an exponential decay, if A is a positive number, and B is somewhere in between 0 and 1, like 1 fourth, okay? 
So that's an exponential decay. So we'll have some exponential growth and exponential decay problems. Okay. Um, and we'll get to those after a little bit. All right. So transformation of graphs. And this book is all about graphing and transforming graphs. What do you think the graph? So 2 to the x graph is a graph that looks like 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1st is 2, 2 to the 2nd is 4. It's a graph that kind of goes like this. Okay? Now, if we go x minus 1, what does that do to the original graph? How is it going to shift it? This is a shift, 1 to the right. What does 2 to the negative x do to it? Reflex around the y axis. So then 3 times 2 to the x, okay, just multiplies 2 to the x times 3. So it stretches. up by factor of 3. Okay. And then, so we've talked about all those. Stretches up by factor of 3. E. The natural log of E is defined as the limit of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power as x is going towards infinity. What is that? Well, let's just look at it. What is 1 plus 1 half to the second power? Let's find that number. Calculator, please. 1.5 to the second power. It's not 0.25. It's what? 2.25? 2.25. Now... Let's take 1 plus 1 over 10 to the 10th power. We're just skipping past some numbers. 2.59. Now let's take 1 plus 1 over 100 to the 100th power. Point seven zero, And as you keep doing this, as you keep making this number larger and this number larger, which makes basically this smaller and this larger, you're going to eventually go to 2.718281828459045, yada, yada, yada. Okay? An easy number to memorize. No? Yeah, it is. Don't you know your U.S. history? No. Does courts not teach you anything no. over there? No, no. no you just play time in Mr. Courts. Play with little dolls and... Oh, those aren't dolls. Those are action figures. Do not call them dolls. I'm just making fun of courts. He's my friend. All right, Andrew Jackson, Old Hickory, right? What president of the United States was he? The second? Are you kidding me? That's John Adams. Come on, Kelly McDermott. What president was Andrew Jackson? 16th was Abraham Lincoln. He's pretty early. Pretty early. Thank you. The seventh president of the United States. How many terms did he serve? Two terms. The two-term president was the seventh president of the United States. When was he first elected? 
I didn't hear you. All right. <laughs> All right. President Garfield was a closet mathematician. He liked to do mathematical proofs. One of the proofs that he did, supposedly while he was in high school, was a proof while he was in the White House, not in high school, while he's in the White House, was a proof of a 45-90-45 triangle. So now we can link U.S. history to the number E. 2.718281828904590. And you're going, well, what does this have to do with me? Does anybody have a bank account? Yeah? Well, interest, if it's compounded continuously, uses the number E. Okay? So, this is exponential growth when E is involved, where if K is bigger than zero, it's going to grow. If K is less than zero, it's going to get smaller. Okay? So we'll see some of that today. Okay? So, exponential growth, exponential decay. Uh, I'm not going to worry about transforming these too much. Moves two to the left, flips around the y-axis, and flips over the x-axis and then this moves down by one okay i mean this stuff that you guys know so i'm not gonna worry about that and a logistic function um i don't think we're gonna talk about that too much all right so what i want to do here really quick and i think i forgot to make the notes on this discard yes discard those all right I think I forgot to do this, set this up. So you're going to have to bear with me for just a little bit. Did I? Oh, yep. Mr. Beerschbach's bad, bad teacher. Did not set up the section for today. But I wanted to go over some problems with you before I assign them out. Come on, come on. Print. Come on. Low computer. The computer is being really slow right now. Okay, so now we'll see it. All right. Does this look like an exponential function? No, no because it has a number as the power. An exponential function has to have a variable as a power. Okay, it has to have a variable as a power. Is this an exponential function? Yes. yes. The initial value is? No. One. one. It's one times five. The base is five. Initial value is one. All right. Okay. Is this an exponential function? No, because it has a variable base. This is a variable. If it has a variable base, it can't be an exponential function. Okay. Is this an exponential function? Yes, if we put a zero in, what's the what what do we get? Three. Okay. All right. So what would the formula for this function be? What should we look at first? 
the zero. This is the base, seven, six, or no, this is the initial value, seven, six. What are we multiplying seven, six by to get seven, 36? One, six to the X power. So that would be our function that we have, okay? Um, we'll have to graph two to the X. So two to the X is um, one, two, zero, one, and then two, four. And it'll, it'll help you graph this as you go. But you go like that. And then what does this do to it? Moves it three to the right. So then you'll have to graph it three to the right. Okay. So you'll have some shifting around and it'll talk. You'll have to work your way through that. Seven to the X power is an exponential function. An exponential function looks like that. Okay. Um, and then you'll have some problems that look like that. Um, moving the graph. So you have to match this graph and then compare it to um, the original of like what would y equals 4 to the x look like. Well, then this, a negative x, flips it over the y-axis and then drags it down by 1. So flips it over the y-axis, dragging it down by 1. Might look something like that. Okay? So... Um, is this exponential growth or exponential decay? Growth, because we're bigger than one. And then you'll have to say, as you, if it's exponential growth, it looks like that. So as you go towards infinity, it'll go towards infinity. As you go towards negative infinity, uh, it goes towards a horizontal asymptote. And I think, what's three? to the point zero 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 one on your calculator. Just do that once. Three to the point zero 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 one power. Yeah, so it approaches one. Okay. So you can like do some of this. Um so if three to the x is smaller than three to the five, if each of these is like the second power, is that a true statement? Is 9 less than 25? Yes. So x would have to be greater than 0 for this to work. Okay. 1 third is greater than 1 half. Let's put the second power on here. Does that work? Is 1 ninth bigger than 1 fourth? No. So a number greater than 1 when it works. So the number has to be less than 1. Okay. So you'll have problems like that. And then we do have some uh, some of these, and these are the, oh, what do we call it? Logistic ones, okay? The logistic ones. And so we have, to, what I would do is just graph it on your graphing calculator, match the correct graph with the graphing calculator. So if I grab my graphing calculator, turn it on, y equals, and I've got to go down here because we were doing a little calculus with these the other day. <laughs> All right, so if I go 10 divided by, oop, 10 divided by, and then you have to use parentheses to put the whole denominator in, one plus four, times 0.3 raised to the x power. If I graph it, I'm not seeing a lot because they say their window goes from negative 10 to 20 and negative 15 to 5 
I graph it now, it's one that basically, I better look at this one. I think it's this one. But I just got to see for sure. Nope. It is choice D. Okay. So we're looking at this one. The y-intercept is easy to find. If you just trace to zero, you can find the y-intercept, which is two. Okay. Horizontal asymptote, if you trace, you can basically figure out what the horizontal asymptotes are. So if I trace here, I'm really close to the number zero for my bottom. For my top, if I trace to like eight, I'm really close, getting close to the number 10. So that my top asymptote be, okay? So graph it and you figure that stuff out, okay? so. There you go. Um, get to work. We are second bell, so you have basically 20 minutes right now to work. You should get most of this done in the 20 minutes. What? <sighs> okay. So 2 to the x is a blue one. And then x minus 1 should be left to the 1. Uh, I don't know why it's wrong. Yeah, why is it wrong? It's supposed to go over more? I guess this does. This is really weird. Just go similar question and let's see what happens. Okay. Does not reflect Your access. Shift three units to the right. Yeah. So we know that graph five to the X. So five to the first. Can't I just go like this? Yeah. And then you're going to trace, right? Can I just plug in a number? One. Good. So zero, one, go zero, one. Zero, one. Over zero, up oh, one. Zero, zero one. one. Click. Click. And then oh, one, five. And then so. Move it over three units. No, no, no. You're still not. You don't have this one graphed right yet. Oh. So the first one has to be graphed right first. And so it's got a vertical sh sh 
stretch of five. Now that's a jerk vertical shift. Go down, down. Five. That should be at zero. Okay. Oop. Doesn't look right. And then do do slide. You'll have to slide it over. Horizontal shift. One more. Are you on the graphic one? Yeah, it's not it's looking right. You want, you want to change it to dotted, I'm pretty sure. Dotted? Yeah, I did the help you solve this thing on it. No, one of the second one. Really? Yeah. But we're still not getting our graph in the right spot yet. Go back, left. Can you just go through and count all of these right there? Oh, the base is not E, the base is 5. That's what it is. There we go. Go 1. Go 1 there. Is yours the same? So just 1, 1, and 2? There you go. Now it's in the right spot. Okay. Save that one, and then now do the second one. Well, it should be right now, right? And you're just going to slide it 3 units to the right. Okay, so just... Click on that. Okay. So one, two, three. Oh, dang it. Okay. So make it five down there. Yeah. And a horizontal shift of three to the right. One, two, three. There you go. Check. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was the base that was causing okay. the problem. It's not the dash thing. Parker was just like blowing, blowing things. Yeah, I think, uh, well, it's the base that you have to change to whatever your base number is. You don't. Base down there is what? Two? It's two. So then that'll put you in the right spot. So then your other one is two. And then your shift. No. Oh, okay. Okay. There you go. So when you're graphing, you have to get the right base number in there. Because it automatically goes to a base of E. So you have to put the right base in there on the bottom of your thing.